So we're at step five, Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He's a person. Amen. He's a person. Hallelujah. He is God Almighty. Amen. Listen, he's the only one here to help us. Can I get a hallelujah? Our Lord Jesus Christ done left and sat down. Amen. He's at the throne. Can I get an amen? So let's, let's get this right. Amen. There ain't no ignoring Holy Spirit. There ain't no denying him. I rebuke that. Amen. He's, he's our God and we are his holy children. His, listen, there ain't nothing about me holy. It's the holy one that lives in me. Amen. Can I say that again? There ain't nothing about me holy. The only reason why I am is because he lives in me. He lives in me. Amen. So let's say it and bless God. Let's be correct when we say it. Say it with me. I am holy. Is that because of you? Hallelujah. Who is it because? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is the exchange. You see, before Christ, we didn't know how to exchange anything. Can I say that again? Thank you, Sister Dina. Listen, before Christ, we didn't know how to exchange anything. Right? It was constant turmoil, constant torment, constant depression, constant anxiety, constant addiction. If this drug didn't do the job, I'll move on to something stronger. Listen, don't judge me. That's what I did, right? If the high wasn't there no, if the high wasn't there no more, guess what? I'll go find another high. I know who I'm talking to, right? And guess what? The devil tried and tried and tried to all put us all away. You know why? The devil didn't want this. Because now we put the devil in his place. Oh, can I get a hallelujah? We put the devil in his place. Hallelujah. We don't play games, amen? And I love it, so say it with me, exchange. The way I am recovered works is that in the step, if you promise God, listen, Father, change me. I'm going to focus on you, Holy Spirit. And I know when I focus on you, you're going to show me things in my life that you want me to give up. And in this relationship with you, Father God, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, even if it hurts, I know you know the best for me. I know that you will take it from me. Amen. And so I promise you in Jesus' name, when you, when you, when you, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm surrounded by worshipers. I know you. I know you. Amen. We're one. I mean, you, 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 in the middle of the night, you got to go pee pee. You, you thank God. What are you doing? You walk, you stumbling to the bathroom. Oh, thank you, Lord. This is the fourth time I got up tonight, but thank you, Lord. You right? Don't judge me. Yeah, four times sometimes. You drink too much water. But it's good to drink water, though. I just need to cut it off earlier. <laughs> Went down the wrong road on that one. Start explaining. Okay, we'll just get back on track, right? Say it with me, exchange. Father loves it. Father loves it. When you would just simply ask him, will you change me? How many of you could honestly, how many of you could honestly, by the show of your hands, your holy hands, how many of you could honestly say that we can use a changing? Right? I lift up, man, I lift everything up, right? I want, I want, I want to be, <laughs> I want to be the best husband for his beloved daughter. Amen. And I know I stand with men of God that believe that same way too. Father, I want to be everything that you want me to be, first and foremost, for you. Amen. Change me, Lord, and I want to be everything that your beloved daughter is praying for. You feel what I'm saying? Man, I want, listen, I want to wreck it for every guy that, you know, seriously, I, I do. I want to wreck it. For, I know we're getting raptured out of here. We're going to hear the trumpet sound, and we're all, hallelujah, we're all leaving together. Amen. But hear my heart. I want, I want her to be so blessed through Holy Spirit in me. That I kid you not that she's just so like on cloud nine in our marriage. Amen. 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 Come on now. Hallelujah. And will you, will you testify, man of God, isn't, isn't our father doing that in all of our marriages here? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Listen, if you got an abundant marriage, if you got a gooder marriage, make some noise. took the garbage trash marriage and father said yeah give me that give me that give me that and here here's what I died for amen here's my resurrection here's my anointing so without further ado praise God live from Lebanon Kentucky 
Brother Todd Elder, make some noise. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Hey, we hey, we gonna go far. We gonna go, we gonna go, we gonna go to east side now. Live from Springfield, Kentucky. Brother Matt Couture, hallelujah. <laughs> Live from Lebanon, Kentucky. There's only one. Come on now. Brother, praise Jesus. Franklin, hallelujah. And say it with me, not Loretta. Come on, say it like you mean, not Loretta. Live from Lebanon, Kentucky, Brother Joey Brady. Hello, my name is P.J. Franklin, and I am recovered through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. I was uh, talking to Joey Brady outside, and uh, God really gave me my message this morning on the way to work, and I, I didn't really know um, what he was going to convict me over, what he was going to punish me over or teach me over, but um, it, it's been a series of things since last Friday um, that he's really been just putting on my heart, and... Imagine being at the throne on Judgment Day, and you go to plead your case, and God says, I've seen all of your flaws, I've seen all of your failures, I've seen all of the struggles, but I knew you. And so without having to plead your case, you had that relationship with God. And I think that, that this, this principle is one of the most important principles because it is an exchange. And, and an exchange is a trade of something, right? I exchange my labor daily for an exchange of a paycheck. Or, or I go to Walmart and exchange my earned income for groceries to feed my, my, my stomach or my hunger, whatever you want to call it. And so... In order to exchange this nonsense that, you, that, that you, we live daily, you have to give it to God. And, and yeah, he exchanged our, um, the hell that we were living on the, for the cross. He exchanged that. We all know that. Amen. So if you got, <laughs> Holy Spirit is just all over me. And, I, and I've done this. And so I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not telling anyone. I, I'm, I'm just speaking what has worked in my life and, and what um, I try to do daily, but, you know, is your bank account not the way that you want it to look? Well, give it to God. Exchange that for a worship on a Sunday morning, right? Is Who's got kids in here, right? Show of hands, anybody? Kids? Who's got kids that aren't doing everything that you want them to be doing? Exchange, I love it. Did you see that? There was no hands right there. Yeah, sorry, had to call that out. Exchange that for a prayer for somebody else that God has put in front of you, right? God gives us the opportunity, but he's not going to give us all the glory without us making the first step. If I'm standing still and Matt tries to push me towards Joey, I might still go, but I'm not going to go as easy if I'm already lunging toward him, right? If I'm going to lunge towards God, then I'm going to go there a lot easier than what I would have already went. So if you have, let's keep it going. If, if you got bills that you're scared ain't going to get paid or your electric might get cut off, exchange that for your money in the offering plate because that's not your money. And watch your light bill. You got, you got 30 more days. You, do you think that the 30 more days is from the electric company? No, they want your money. But God wants your heart and your worship and your every day. You know, and so that's what, 
I, I try to explain whenever I'm um, witnessing to brothers and sisters that, uh, out in the world, I try to explain to them, uh, and I've said this time and time again, in order to, to live a godly life, you have to give everything to God. And in order to give everything to God, it's not a, hey, here, God, take this and, and step away. It's daily. Here, God, I want you to have this starburst. But yet they keep coming. Well, every time they come, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you that one too, God. And I'm going to pray over that, God, you just take that away from me. And so on and so forth. So if you have someone that you don't want to be around or, or if, you have, if you're struggling with addiction, let's just go there. And it keeps coming towards you. God, here, I give you this. Please bless this, God. And it keeps coming. It keeps coming. It's not going to stop because you've got to put in the work. Now, once you're four or five in, seven, eight, might take you 50. It might take you 100. But God's going to give you the wisdom to, well, I'm just not going to, I'm going to turn this way. And now I ain't got no starburst. There ain't no starburst there, right? And so it's an exchange. It's a, it's a constant daily exchange. That's why I think I am recovered past tense because I'm not there no more. That it's a daily exchange. You got to pick up your cross daily. But, but what, are you, what is God getting? He's giving you that cross to pick up daily. What are you giving to him? What are you exchanging, right? What am I exchanging daily for that cross? And I think that it's, um, it's real important to me in order for, for my family to have success as Christians. Um, we all know if you, um, I, I don't know it word for word, but if you bring your kids to church or show them Christ, then if they leave, then they'll come back again. Uh, forgive me for not knowing word for word. Um, so in order for me to do that, I have to exchange that, God, these are your children. And, and I've lived that. Pastor, you was a part of that. Uh, I almost lost a, uh, um, almost didn't, I don't know the right way to say this, I almost didn't have custody or to be able to see my youngest son, um, but that's because I thought that he was mine, and he wasn't, it's it's not my, my son, it, it, it's God's son, and I'm just here to show him the right way, Amen. that's it, and, um, and not only did I struggle with that, but then God said, well here, I'm going to give you this one plus these three other ones, you know, and then um, I, I still lived a Christian life, and then, and you spoke it, my marriage has just, I exchanged the dead self for the new self, and my marriage has just went, I mean, man, my marriage is just, I'm, I have the best marriage, sorry, all of y'all, sorry y'all, but I got it, you know, um, but that's because I chose to exchange my mouth and my thoughts, and I'm not perfect. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me claim that right now. I am not perfect. But I do know that if God wants me to be more like Jesus, he's going to put me through everything that Jesus went through, right? When he was lonely, I, you know, I have to be lonely. Well, you think there was times when Jesus wasn't depressed or he didn't have his friends um, not claiming him as I've never seen Jesus before? Peter denied him three times, and they walked with Jesus side by side and you can't tell me that it, anyway um, it's, a, it's a constant exchange and, and God has really taken who I was and created me to be more like him less of me more of him amen, amen. and um, with that I just pray a wholehearted exchange over. I know everyone in the in in this building tonight. I know your all's hearts. I really do. Everyone here is just so in love with God, and the best part about it is He's even more in love with you. But there's somebody out there yet, and we're calling them in. And um, I'm going to end on that note. I love you, and we'll see you soon, whoever you are. My name is Joy, and I'm recovered through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, through my life, I've exchanged a lot of things. Uh, but most recently, you know, it's, it's, I love what you said, you know, we used to exchange this drug, this drug, this drug. So that was a lot of it. But until I've come to know Christ, I really didn't understand that exchange. Uh, 
I'm like you. I'm all over the place with this because we got to minister to to a friend of ours earlier, and of course I won't speak no names or anything. But uh, this is what came to me. This is what came to me. The, through the exchange comes victory. It takes so much work and effort to live defeated. But to live victorious is so much more effortless. Uh, you exchange your victory, but through Holy Spirit, or change, exchange defeat for victory through Holy Spirit. 17 years ago, whenever I got saved, I didn't know what, I didn't know that, I didn't know what that exchange was. I knew that he took it. I knew that he took the addiction and cast it back to the pits of hell, but, and he freed me from it. But I just, I didn't know how to, I knew that I was blessed. I just thought that was for a blessing and to save my family and this and that. Who knew 17 years later, <laughs> he would be using me Amen. and my beloved to go out and talk to people and tell them about Christ, love on them. Uh, so this most recent exchange, I mean, it, this this step is really, and we've been through this four times now, and this, this step has really started resonating with me because I always, you know, you always hear be the hands and feet of Jesus, be the hands and feet of Jesus, but until you actually start doing that work, you don't really understand. Uh, it's, it's only through his grace and mercy, though, I mean, it's nothing to do with me. It's all to do with Holy Spirit. Uh, exchange your choices of the flesh for the choice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, been saved 17 years now, and it's taken me the last couple of years to realize what those different things of the flesh want you to grab a hold to. But as I said before, we're not going to take any of that with us. Amen. You know, so it doesn't matter anymore. We gotta, we gotta walk every day trying to be more like Him, less like ourselves. And, and the closer we get to Him, the further, the further behind Satan's going to be. You know, it's. <laughs> Another exchange He's given me. See, I got a band-aid on my finger I about cut my finger to the bone yesterday and I would that anger that I used to have I would <laughs> I would have yeah bleep yeah bleep 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 I have a I, ha I have a friend that uh taught me this a few years ago and uh that's the first time I'd ever heard it but he had he had actually hit his finger while he was nailing something he said thank you Jesus and I thought well that ain't what I would say you know so now, even even probably a year ago, something like this would have happened. I would have been cussing and mad and angry. But God, Holy Spirit, conviction, thank God for that. He, he changes me every day, and I thank him for that. Uh, but anyway, exchange, that like Brother said, it, it's an exchange every day. Pick up his cross, hike it, leave your stuff behind. Don't. Don't go to bed at night and pick it right back up the next day. Just leave all that stuff behind and let God do work in your in, in your in your life, and it can only get gooder and gooder from there. That's all I have. <laughs> You're supposed to follow that, man. I always is down here. We're starting next time. Run over so I can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matthew Coulter. I'm recovered by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Hello. My Holy Spirit ex uh, exchange, I'm probably the most recent. I knew, I, I knew God when I was growing up, but that's it. I knew who Jesus was, and, and I knew God as, as Jesus, and that's, just, that's it. And the sad reality of it is, is, I see it more and more every day. That's the churches that were, that, that's the message that they preach, is just Jesus. There's no God, there's no Holy Spirit, it's just Jesus. 
that's only one part. And I, I never, I never knew, nor did I hear of Holy Spirit. I didn't know anything about Holy Spirit, and, I, and I'm not putting open arms on a pedestal or anything like that. I'm putting God's holy temple on the pedestal. I'm putting God on the, te- on the pedestal that he opened the door for me to come here and experience Holy Spirit. I had, that, that was my exchange. I had never felt, or I had thought I had never felt that, I would never understood it. Now I understand looking back on reflecting on life when God shows me things. Okay, God, I know that was you then. Now I understand it because it happens now, and now I understand what it was back then. I, it was you moving, and I just didn't realize it. So that that's my exchange for me getting to God. But God showed me today that It's not about me. It's not about any of these brothers up here. It's not about your pastor. It's not about any of you sitting out there. It's not about anybody on Facebook watching. The greatest exchange, there's three in the Bible, and most of them are summed up in Luke. God sending Gabriel to Mary to tell her that she was going to be the birth, the mother of Lord Jesus Christ. That was God's first greatest exchange. God was tired of his people falling away and him showing them the the floods, all the stuff that he saved them through, all the major events that he did in history, that he, he brought people through and he used his people. He was tired of it. So he hit himself in the flesh in Jesus. When Jesus was here on earth, Jesus told his disciples and all the people that he come in contact with that now Jesus, God in the flesh is here and he's exchanging that I'm leaving. That's my exchange for you is I'm leaving for you and I'm going to give you something that I'm going to leave here with you that will be here forever. So that's the second greatest exchange. The third is God calling his son home and Jesus leaving to go sit at the throne with him. And now we all have Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. That's the greatest exchange. It's better than any testimony you can ever have from anybody on this earth. That's the ultimate exchange. All right, I'm done. Yeah, that's all God. I'm Todd Elder. I'm, a, I'm recovered through the blood of my sweet Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hello, hello, God. Uh, yeah, whoever said every day is an exchange is, is, is on, on track. Yeah. It's like it's a process. It's a process. Uh, yeah, like you, George. It's been 17 years, man. Can't thank my God enough for the exchange he made with me. Uh, torment. Chaos, drama, I exchanged all that for peace. Can't hear me. Oh, but uh, it, <laughs> amen, amen. Um, yeah, man, I, I've done, got speechless now. I listened to all them talk. But, you know, and I, I'm, uh, the Holy Spirit's flooding me while they're talking. Now I'm, now I'm, but anyway, Holy Spirit teach, Holy Spirit preach. I decrease, I decrease. Uh, it's process, like I said, uh, The exchange I made was, uh, uh, I went from serving me to serving the Lord. Um, instead of instead of thinking about what I want, now I, I think about what He would want. Uh, like I said, it's a process, man. I fall I fall short daily, uh, but I'm not a failure. I, I fail at things that I try, uh, but but God. But God, but God's always got my back, because uh, because He's always first on my mind. And uh, and like you said, uh, PJ, there's there's some people out there that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. My prayers are for you, uh, that you would come to know the only one that can uh, deliver you, redeem you, heal you, give you peace, love, joy, 
forgive you. Uh, it's so simple, so simple. We just got to admit that we're sinners and, and believe that Christ lived and died and, and we redeemed through that, through his blood and, and uh, we get saved by Lord Jesus Christ and, and we receive Holy Spirit. The only reason I'm here is the Holy Spirit lives in me. It's the only reason I'm here. I, uh, oh, yeah, bottom line, drop the mic, walk out. <laughs> uh, but God is so good to me. I'll tell you, uh, my struggles today, are they're nothing. They're nothing. Deaths. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just I, I, Death doesn't affect me like it used to because, because I do my part every day through Holy Spirit guidance and teaching. To, to be the best person I can and to treat people with the utmost respect and love and courteousness that, that, they, that I would think God would want them to have. But um, I just have so much peace today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. I just have peace today. Uh, just like I said, the finger cutting, I, I still got an indention on the top of my head underneath the trailer there a few weeks ago. And, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to say some choice words. And, but God... Because I have a relationship with him, with him today, he's like, I, I, and I'm like, and so I, I backed off that big angle iron I bumped into, and I said, sweet Jesus. <laughs> sweet Jesus. Keep it together where I don't have to get stitches at least, you know. But, uh, but uh, again, my, my exchange is just uh, life, death for life. And, uh, and I grow in life every day because, like I said, I, I draw close to the Lord. I I read the word, and man, I want with my whole heart nothing but God to just show his face to me and, and, and let me know what he would have me do for him. And uh, there's just so much, you know, just, just so much, but it's all so simple. Oh, sweet Jesus, I couldn't do anything without, without Holy Spirit in me. Uh, before I received Holy Spirit, it was, like I said, uh, you know, hell bound uh, with the hammer down. <laughs> Now I'm heaven bound with a hammer down through Holy Spirit. But uh, I, I'm just so grateful. I'm just grateful, grateful, grateful. Like I said, I, I have joy. I have peace. Uh, can't, can't complain about a thing today. And if I do, y'all y'all call me out on it because I have nothing I can complain about. I get to go be with the Lord when it's all said and done. Man, I hope them, hope these parts them clouds tonight. I really do. I really do. But uh, thank God for Holy Spirit. But like I said, I... I Every day, uh, there's something. He'll show me something new every day. Something new every day that I, I, can, I need to get rid of or, or I need to do different or, or I need to start doing. You know, and uh, just love my brothers and sisters. That's what he has for me to do. I love my brothers and sisters. Even if you don't know Jesus, I have more compassion for you than I do the ones that say they do but don't act like they do. Oh, I'm going to stop right there. But anyway, thank you, Jesus, for the exchange. Let's give God praise again. I think we need to get gooder than that. Amen. At this time, we like to open up the floor. Amen. Now, if you guys notice, it's pretty early. These guys, um, they're really kind to you. They want to hear from you too. Um, I'm not going to call anybody out, but um, the past couple months, I've always heard after the table, I should ask this question. This was on my heart. And if it's you, you know I told you, be obedient to the Lord and just ask. There is no wrong. I heard that the only dumb question is the one that's not asked. Are you calling me dumb? No, I'm not calling you dumb. If you don't ask the question, then that's between you and the Lord, right? But don't get your feelings all hurt, right? I'm just saying. So please, anybody have a question for the table? Praise God. Thank you, beloved. Hello, my name is Trish Karangan, and I am recovered through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved <laughs> of God. Okay, so other than Lord Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, what exchange are you most thankful for? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Hello. It's on. Uh. My calling to be a servant. I mean, 
mean, uh, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the blessed life that God gives me. But that's just earthly things. The call to be his servant and anything I can do to glorify him and serve him, that's what I'm most grateful for. After, Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit. said it man I, I, I just love Jesus I, I, I want to serve him I, I just yeah I mean you said it I mean outside of that like I said he, he's blessed everything in my life Amen. my wife she's not perfect she's perfect for me and, and she says I'm perfect for her Amen. and she asked me to go first tonight she said can you go first I said absolutely not I'm going to go in order Holy Spirit puts it on <laughs> I said I'm not but there, anyway I'm going to say a while ago there's an order I, I thank God for the exchange from disorder to order. Peace, freedom, victory, but they're all from Christ. Uh, I guess what I'm most thankful for, for other than that is the exchange in my relationship with my wife from where we were to where we are uh, still follows along with having Christ first. Uh, just thankful and grateful for everything. Uh, one thing I still need to exchange is uh, frustration. Uh, but he's going to take that too. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, it's all gooder and gooder, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, have no, I have nothing else, I mean, <laughs> I'm blessed. I'm thankful for each um, blessing and lesson that I learned through, mostly for myself, bad or trials or tribulations, but I'm thankful that the exchange of a bad time for a learned experience, because it's really led me to not only to blame him for it in a good way, you know, um, but it's, it's really created the person that I am, and, and I think that it helps me. Uh, I'm the one that's, you can tell me not to touch the hot stove, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to get burned. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm really thankful uh, for one, for second chances and grace, but um, just the the learned or learning experience that God has uh, allowed me to go through through each negative time. So the I guess the answer would be the exchange of a bad time for a lesson learned. Question for the table. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Craig. Starting to get a little concerned here. Y'all kind of quiet. Praise God. I'm Craig, and I'm recovered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved of God. <clears throat> I love each and every one of you sitting there. TJ, you asked a question of who. I'm so I'm that at peace of knowing where they're at in their life, their exchange, that I'm ready to go. I, I know in my heart that I'm ready, but I know they're ready too, and that makes me so proud, so proud. <laughs> but you asked me a que another question a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? 
Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Check, check. The question that I asked Craig, so everyone is filled in on that, we were in small groups, and he was bragging on Holy Spirit. And um, I asked him who Holy Spirit was to him. And so that was his answer. And That's I just, beautiful. I wanted everyone to know what he was answering. Amen. That's, that. That's absolutely Love beautiful. You. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else? Praise God. It's your opportunity to ask a question to a brother that, hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Sister Lisa's like, I'll just raise my hand so you stop talking. Hello, my name's Lisa, and I'm recovered through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved of God. Okay, we know that each and every one of you have given your life to God, and that you've exchanged everything that you have for Holy Spirit. Now, is there something in your current life that you are doing for God that you think you can improve on? that you think you could be better at? Or is there something there that is still, you're not where you need to be? Anybody else that would have been? Woo! Let's uh, for me, for me, it's, um, I just lost my, hold on. Caring what people think that keeps me from witnessing to them because of maybe who you are, the position you, you hold, that's what I that's what I want God, need God to help me with is is, is being stronger and, and more bold in my witness and testifying to people, no matter who they are. So that but that for me that's that's what I, I need to improve on is like I said, just just I don't you know what? I care, but it doesn't matter what people think about me because I know I'm right with the Lord. Amen. Sometimes, though, I let, I let that care get in the way of that person that I might not witness to them because, like I said, because of who they are or where they've been. I, that's what I need help with. Good word. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. Uh, mine is, I try to eliminate myself from, because I come from the anger. That's a generational curse in our family that we're trying to break. Yeah, the, yeah, it's broken. You're right. Good word. And I get crunchy over stupidity. I just can't. Like God gives us the infinite wisdom. If you if you can if you can get up and put your shoes on and drive to work, you should be able to figure out how to how to come in the door. I mean, but a lot a lot of people. God bless them, bless them, Lord. They're your children. But when it's something silly like that, and it's truly just silliness. I, I, I want to get irritated real quick. So I try to separate myself from people. But if I separate myself, I can't witness to people. that are, I can't be that shoulder or that, that pillar of God to be that light in their life. And so I have to maneuver like a swift river around people. And sometimes it's a struggle because you bless people and they're non-believers, and that's okay. You know, God gives them that free choice. It's not my choice. It's their choice, and it's God's choice. You know, that's their relationship. But when you hear them blasphemy God and, and just constantly cuss or they're negative and stuff, you don't want to be around it. You don't want to hear it. But at the same time, God calls you to change that situation, to speak that life over them, to bless them because they're still his child. So my biggest struggle that I, and my biggest exchange in my worship life is being around those people but being able to let God flow 
so that when that garbage comes near me, he blocks it and pushes it back. And Holy Spirit just drowns out it, um, especially with the GD word, like Holy Spirit just flood them, flood them. Uh, yeah, good daddy, great daddy. Yeah, great daddy. Yeah, so, um, but that that's my biggest exchange, and that's the biggest thing that I pray that God just, Gives me the wisdom, gives me the strength each and every day to get through because they're ultimately they're still a child of God. And that's what we have to see even through the ugly, even through the mud, because we were that same pig rolling in that same pig pen that they are in right now. (laughs) So the question was, what do we think we can improve on as a Christian? Right. Um, everything, uh, you know, um, obviously we're not, it will we'll never be where I think that we all would like to be. Um, but to, to answer your question, I think is what I feed my soul who I'm around. Um, and of course, it's not always my choice. And, um, well, I guess, I guess it is, uh, because no matter where you're at, you can walk away from anybody. Um, and then, um, not so much anymore like the music, but there is some times that when you hear something around someone else, you, you get that little groove going again or something, you know. Um, but I think it's real important to me that if, to be a hundred percent committed Christian, I mean, if you're... If you're a vegetarian, you can't do, you can't eat a hot dog, you know what I mean. You got to be a hundred percent, or you know, and he, I just um, that's important to me is what I take, and, and also what I feed my temple. Um, I have a pocket full of empty wrappers, <laughs> and I th- I think that that's you know i've been up here snacking the whole time and but at the same time i I don't want to pass up my blessing either you know so um but i but i really think what we take into our soul and spirit and what we put in our temple um is an exchange of what comes back out and so um i think that's probably what i would change what i take in in all areas Two areas, uh, as I said, frustration. Uh, I've got so much peace about me, Holy Spirit peace, but I still sometimes can get frustrated with mostly family and better use of my time when I've got 15 minutes here or there. I need to make better use of it either in my word or in my uh, worship music just anything that's uh, of God, you know, a better, uh, what do you call them, a podcast, uh, better use of my time, you know, I've got too much, I wouldn't say idle time, but I've got lazy time, you know, and I, and I, it's just as easy to open up that Bible as it is to click that remote, or a lot of times we like to just sit on the back porch and just see a sunset, you know, but uh, better use of my time. All that's going to make me draw closer to him, you know. Uh, and one other thing. Oh, you were talking about listening to that music. I don't, I'll turn the radio on to listen to the local channel, local news sometimes, and I don't completely backlash from that. You know, I'll, I might listen to a song or two from country. And when we was on the way uh, home from school the other day, I was picking my granddaughter up from Michael Jackson's camp in downtown, and she wanted to flip it over there and, beat it or drill her, you know, and I was kind of getting into that, you know, but as soon as it was over with, I went right back to my Christian music, but, you know, that's, it's it's just, 
you you want to you want to take in all Christian stuff and and uh, but it's it's just hard to. Uh, but yeah, those those are a few things that I can improve on. Well, he can improve on in in me in me. Beloved Dean and Gaither, anyway. Oh, they're hilarious up here. You need to be in the front row and watch them just go chow down. Just praise God. Beloved Amanda has something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Through exchange comes true freedom. How do you all avoid falling back into the sin that God has set you free from? My name is Amanda, and I'm recovered through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Did you get the question? Did you hear the question? Oh, no, we didn't hear nothing. Okay. Through exchange comes true freedom. How do you avoid falling back into the sin that God has set you free from? Well, I mean, that's been easy for me. Because who the sun sets free, you're free indeed. And stay, staying plugged in is the thing. Uh, because if you come unplugged, the devil has you right where he wants you. Idle time, idle minds, he have you right where he wants you. But just staying plugged in and knowing that he is the one true God. <laughs> um. For me, two two things. Um, for one, I lived that life, and I now I live this life, and it's just I, there's just absolutely I don't I, I don't I don't even need God not to go back there anymore. And I know that that's a bold statement, but that's how much good my life is now with God, you know. And then also, this is a huge one for me: is my wife has a lot of discernment, and I don't. And so I'm married to her, and therefore she gives it to me. And so she'll say, hey, no, that is hot. And now Holy Spirit's wisdom says, ah, don't do that. It might be hot, you know. Yeah. So uh, the comparison of lives, and, and I just I got to say that Holy Spirit, forgive me for my statement saying that I don't need God not to go back there. I, I just got to confess that in front of all you. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right, amen. He died once for me, and that's all I intend for him to do. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm always, always. <laughs> Jump over and tackle them and take the mic away from them. It's like, shh, man. Yeah, so uh, what does Tim say all the time? Ditto. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that, was, it was, it was, that was a garbage lifestyle. And in the time, I really didn't realize it. Uh, thank God for my wife who prayed for me through that. It wasn't just a, not just a discernment, not just a shoulder to crime, but a woman that boldly prayed for me when I was in those seasons, when I was in that darkness, when I was running. And it's kind of, it's it's basically the same definition of insanity, you know, just constantly repeating the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. I don't want to be in that insanity. I'm at, I'm at peace. I'm free. I, I'm clear-minded. Um, and I don't want to live in that chaos. I don't want to live in that destruction. So there's nothing that can make me run away from God. or uh, There's nothing that can make me turn away from him. Because he's delivered me out of that chaos, out of that wreckage, out of that storm. Not to say that, that we don't have other things come against us and the devil don't try. But the main mentality of it is when that storm comes, when those thoughts come, when the devil's trying to crawl up on your back, is you just plead the blood of Jesus over you constantly. Uh, I mean, and, and that's... Me being bold enough to say that I and confessing that I had to do that this morning, 
to the point of, you know, I'm trying to pray in my in my worship time and be secret with God, and the devil was just trying all over me. And I'm in a room that's dripping, running oil, anointing oil all off the walls and the doors and everything like that to the point of I was like, I might need to wipe this up in case somebody slips on it because it's tile floors in here. and and But the devil can still try to come into that place because of the atmosphere of where it's at. It's not... It's not my temple. It's what I make it. But the devil, it's the garbage that everybody else brings in there around me. So he can still be in there and he can still try to attack. But sometimes you just got to stop and it's, God, there's nothing worth me, not nothing worth me asking for. There's nothing worth me lifting up to you besides your name and pleading the blood over it. And that keeps me from going back to that lifestyle or even letting the devil in, thinking that I'm even in that mind frame. Amen, brother. What was the question again? What, what, what keeps us from going back? Or, yes. Yeah. Backslide. Wanna, I, I knew where I knew where I was, and I know where I am now. Gratitude. Is <laughs> anybody else? Praise God. Y'all know this is gonna get gooder and gooder, huh? He never asks a question, too. <laughs> My name's Donnie. I'm a cover of Travis Rose. You know, I, I was raised in religion right from young, and I find it hard to believe that people don't know the problem that they have with it. But I was trying to please people back then, and I tried to live my life the way people told me to, not the way God told me to. So how can I convince people? Let's give God praise for that question. Hallelujah. Be an example. Yeah, exactly. The Holy Spirit should flow out of you. Um, but ultimately, it's their exchange with Holy Spirit. They have to have that life or death situation, come to Jesus meeting to where they, they face and... and Religion's not getting me there. Um, the only thing you can do is pray for them and uplift them and, like he said, be an example. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just agape. Yeah, just let your light shine on them. I mean, even when it's hard to, you know, yeah, especially when it's hard. Just let your light shine. And they see the change in you and... Once it changes right there, then it might change the rest, you know, the rest of it. But it, it all starts right there. You can beat them in the head and tell them about relationship and religion, what the difference is. But until it gets in there, it ain't going to matter. So let your light shine on them, and God will change them in his time. Is there anybody else? Great questions tonight. Hallelujah. One more time. Is there anybody else? We don't want to rush. Praise God. I knew it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Get yourself a Holy Spirit cup this year. My name is Dina, and I'm recovered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved of God. Uh. Joey, you've known me for years. I've known you for years. But look at you now when you was a little kid. And I was hanging out with your parents. And God only knows what we were doing. And you were a little bitty thing riding your little tricycle on your bicycle outside. And I come out and you said, bye. 
mind. Here I was staggering through the yard trying to get out. <laughs> but we go way back, way back. And I have just got to share this from my heart. And all of you all, I've known him for a long time, but I have gradually watched each and all three of you all grow and present him to me. And the Holy Spirit is so proud of you. He said there's nothing, nor pro nothing that you could do that make him love you any more. And that he's so proud of each and every man sitting here. Because he said you, if you are called and you are trying, get it? We're trying. That's all we can do. But he's proud of you. And he loves you with his whole heart. And he'll never let you go. He'll always be there for you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Take all the blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Agape. Take all the blessings. Amen. Oh, that's so beautiful, ain't it? Say it with me. Speak life. Speak life. You have the ability, the power to change your situation and circumstance. Amen. And isn't that what Holy Spirit's been, been teaching and ministering to us for the past, feels like a month now. Solid. Let's give the table a round of applause. Hallelujah. We love you guys. We love you guys. We love you guys. So, uh, <laughs> he ain't have a question, but he wants to clap for five minutes. That's ours for you, huh? Um, by the grace of God, he holds time. He holds time. He held time tonight. Um, Holy Spirit said that you guys have some stuff in closing. And um, I don't want to rush anything. I just, I want you to say whatever God has laid on your heart and um, just to make sure that you get everything out. Um, I'd like to thank all of our family around the world that's, that's tu that tunes in. We have no idea. It's all his glory. Um, here we are in Lebanon, Kentucky, and just being obedient to the Lord. And we're grateful that you, you're worshiping with us, that you're watching the videos. And um, I just... Uh, I ask for your prayers because the time is running short. And we will reach every soul that Father God has assigned for us. Amen. Amen. Say it with me. We will. In Jesus' name. Amen. So whoever has something, because I know, I know you do. Holy Spirit said so. So um, yes, just the, the floor is open to you guys. We're done. Um, Holy Spirit was just working on me right there. And is what I'd like to do if. Whoever wants to be involved, Joe, if you would help me pass the mic around, I'd like to pray about it first and foremost. Um, speak a name, just the first name, no last name of someone that you're calling in. And uh, in order to speak life, I think that that's what we should do. Um, and so um, I'll start. Justin. My mom and dad, Molly, Jacqueline, Ashley, Will, Darlene. There we go. And my mom, Vito. Matthew, Heather, Josh, Ronnie, and Brad. I'm going to stay anonymous. All of my family. Ditto. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to just um, call in your souls, Father God, your children. We know they are lost, but right now, Father God, as I speak this very next word, Father God, 
you're going to show up and show out in their life, Father. We just pray just blessings over them, Father God. Go before them in each and every way, whatever they're struggling with, whatever their heart desires, Father God. We just ask that you just bless it in your way. Your will be done, Father God, not the way that we want it, not the way that we see it. But we just continue. We just we just pray over them, Father. We just want your love to just be all wrapped around them, Father God, like a warm towel right out of the dryer, Father God. We just thank you for this grace and the opportunity to just speak life and call these people in, Father God. A new life, a new beginning. Generational strongholds are broken at this very moment. Chains are falling, Father God. Holy Spirit, do your work and do your will, Father. We just love you and we thank you again. And it's in your son's precious holy name and all of God's children said, Amen.